Nothing defined the early 2000s quite like iPods, teen movies, Paris Hilton, Ugg Boots, and the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Every man wanted to marry them, and every woman wanted to be them. The woman's version of the Super Bowl, and it gripped our TV screens every November. I used to fantasize about how amazing it would be to get glammed up, wear those sequin bras, spend months getting paid to just focus on my looks, get my fitness, skincare, everything dialed in. And this video, I'm gonna live up to that fantasy. Prepping like a Victoria's Secret model would be for a Victoria's Secret fashion show. But I will not be doing a Victoria's Secret fashion show. I will be doing something different. Do I look glamorous? No, but get ready, caffeine. And how we gotta start the day. Matcha, that's what they all do. I really want coffee. I secretly had a coffee before. Do you gonna be busted? What sparked this reminder of the BS show for me was seeing the rebranded launch at New York Fashion Week this year, now known as the Victoria's Secret World Tour. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't goddamn excited for this. Because guess what? I love the BS fashion show and I was so sad, actually pissed when it ended. But then, yes, it was also projecting this idea of the ideal woman, something we should all strive to be. And you had to fit a very specific mold. And it did sadden me that they canceled it instead of simply just embracing diversity, which will talk about throughout this video. Nothing says supermodel like an overpriced smoothie and avocado toast. So I use this video as an excuse to taste test the Hailey Bieber smoothie at Air One. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Oh, and if you're new around here, I'm deathly allergic to avocado. So I swapped the model's avocado toast for lox and cream cheese toast. The famous Hailey Bieber smoothie. Let's give us a go. I get why people spend $20 on these things. Like, could I do that every day and not go into debt? No, but like, it's so good. Toast? I'm being awkward. I'm very upset of how good this smoothie is. By no means should anyone spend over $20 on a smoothie. But now I have the taste buds for that sweet nectar and I'm gonna crave it but I don't want to justify buying this ever again. Circa 2018 YouTube, there was nothing more popular than doing a Victoria's Secret workout. I did one. I thought it'd be fun to revisit. It was called Pvolve, and it used to be like an online program, but now there's an actual gym here in Hollywood. So I thought for pure nostalgia, I'm going to go try it. Miscalculated, it's almost done. I'm jaywalk. I have paranoid jaywalking in foreign countries. Only by the same people as you can help. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh no. Another Equinox establishment that I allegedly will be filming at. The PFOV workout is described as a functional movement method that transforms your body through workouts that improve performance and help manage everyday pain. Let's go. I don't know what class is. I thought it was totally different. It's interesting reflecting back almost a decade later because it was this unique time that there was an ideal woman. It was like the quarterback of being a girl was a Victoria's Secret angel, the peak woman, a woman that every male wanted to date and every woman wanted to be. And so many of us had that image of a VS model being ideal for our formative years, myself included. And I think it's had lasting effect on women's body. I think of it like bodybuilding and myself personally, it messed with my mind for so long after seeing myself at that like peak shredded. And it's not maintainable. It was for like three hours once a year, but my normal healthy weight took me so long to embrace that because I felt I was never ripped enough after seeing this image of myself that was only really possible once a year, similar to a Victoria's Secret model, obviously on a very, very, very small scale. And I'm sure it's how it seemed to a lot of those models and how they were doing crazy things to their bodies, not all of them, but then also reflecting back like, I don't even look like that every day of the year, whether it just be makeup, tanner, extensions, and they're fasting or not. And that's not the case for all of them, Specifically, that one clip stood out of the girl snapping back at the interviewer when he asked what she was most excited about to eat after the show. Ask more, more smart questions, not eating after the show. You make me look what? like an idiot. Loved it. Confession, any place that gives little mints after, little chocolates, instant 505 Yelp review for me. No matter what, I'm blinded by the little treat. 10 out of 10. I'm so pumped for this. This one fitness girly model I follow, Allie Boyker, she always is posting this place. And I'm like, I need to try it. California Chicken Cafe. So we got a wrap and we got a salad. 
this worked better in my head. Don't mangle it, Kelty. Don't ruin a great thing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh. Sorry, my phone's got to eat first for this bad boy. Mm. Mm, mm. Okay, whenever I used to watch those Victoria's Secret get ready with me, they always got a lymphatic drainage massage, especially if they traveled anywhere, just to like get all the water retention out. The irony I did this in a heat wave when I have no water left in me. But today I'm hitting up the tox. I just swell up like a balloon whenever I travel. If it just gets my muscles going, blood flowing. The Victoria's Secret show was canceled for many reasons in 2018. The brand's inability to adapt to consumers wanting more diverse body features. And in recent years, VS models themselves have come out and said the unrealistic expectations placed on them. So it's just interesting. It's not necessarily the models. It was the pressure that was put on the models and the image they portrayed out then put pressure on the consumer. <laughs> Okay, I had this thought in the middle of massage and I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Something felt really icky. I was through this and I was like, oh, why am I doing this? My idea behind this video is like, I was just craving some old school nostalgic YouTube because if there's anything I love to do is just entertain you guys. I was like, let's do an old nostalgia, like 24 hours of the Victoria's Secret model. That was like such a thing like six years ago. But something uh, just about the indulgence of like, this is so unrealistic. No one has the time for this. It's so much of the day of just how you look and I was been running around and it's just like, I don't want to spend this much money. It just, women are so much more than this. And not saying in like 2012, they weren't. Even the Victoria's Secret model, so many of them have gone on to do great things. This little rant you were about to hear, yeah, I redid it three times. Each rant over 10 minutes because I couldn't at the time comprehend why I had this sinking, icky feeling halfway through the day making this video. So I put this video away for a little bit and stepped back and reflected. And I honestly had this video sitting on a hard drive for several weeks. Why couldn't I have fun with it? Why was I so sad near the end of doing it? Something just didn't sit right. And that's why I almost didn't post this video. Maybe it was knowing deep down the struggle so many women had due to this. How many women Googled, what does a Victoria's Secret model eat in a day? And then media sources would know that and they would put all these articles because they heard Bella Hadid once ate this salad. So they're saying she ate this every day or whatever the case is. But then part of me is also like, Kelty's not that deep. It's girls in sparkly bras, glam, enjoy it. And maybe that's why it's this weird sinking feeling. It's because both of these things can be true at the same time. Okay, back to the video you guys all clicked on. Now I saw them all about the two days and I wasn't feeling a Barry's boot camp at 7 p.m. in a heat wave. So I hit up an aloe yoga because has anyone noticed all the Victoria's Secret angels became aloe models? <laughs> I mean, genius on aloe's part. And also I will take any excuse to walk into this store. And I just had a nice zenful end to my day, except for dinner. Where would a model eat? And I thought, who's the biggest model? Kendall Jenner. I went to La Scala to have the Kardashian salad. Yes, the one that you see them shaking. Phenomenon about shaking salads. I made a whole entire YouTube short reviewing this, so stay tuned if you want to see that. But in general, delicious salad. I don't it's odd that an Italian place is known for its salad. The sheer volume of this food hurt my stomach. It's a lot of volume of food. <laughs> if I got it again, I would get the happy side with a side of pasta instead of the three pounds of lettuce I had to shove in my mouth. And the bread was kind of subpar, not gonna lie. That was disappointing. Kardashian salad review. It was delicious, but it was so massive. Like I left so bloated and full, but it also was like not a lot to it. So it was just a couple beans, some lettuce, some tomatoes, a lot of chicken, now some, a ton of veggies, and then the dressing. So it like filled up my stomach, but I'm like hungry now. Personally, it was not nearly enough carbs for what I need. Uh, so now like I'm hungry. I know I can just feel I need more, but my stomach is so stuffed. Speaking of Victoria's Secret models and eating, I think this is also the peak of models claiming they live off pizza, which was this weird messed up stereotype that looking back on, I don't blame anyone, but it's, it's weird, hear me out. Just being involved a little bit in the modeling scene, more on the sports and fitness side and being involved in bodybuilding, I see what people do to get ready for a show. There's all these crazy things people do just to look peak ready, but it's not healthy. And they realize that just knowing it's a sacrifice for this great career achievement just for like three hours on stage. Now, just like an MMA fighter cuts 
water and wait for a fight or a bodybuilder does for a show. I think a lot of these Victoria's Secret models were doing it for the show. And I think of myself, I'm not gonna lie, if I had to be watched by that many people, I would do everything I possibly could to look perfect. And I think these women were aware that they were big role models. I think not all of them, some of them were doing insane things to get ready. And they knew if they put that out to everyone, young girls could hear that and they'd be like, oh my God, I'm gonna cut all carbs. And I'm gonna cut water and cut sodium or whatever crazy things they did. And so they didn't wanna be a bad influence. They might've been doing super restrictive things, but they didn't want people knowing. So what did they say? They said, oh, I eat pizza. Because they didn't want bad things coming out, but at the same time, then the audience says, oh my God, why does this girl live off pizza and look like that versus I'm doing everything possible to look shredded and I don't look that way. And so it was kind of a lose-lose situation. They had to appear a certain look to walk the stage. So the pressure they felt, and then we as a consumer pressure put on. So it was just this weird time. I have a special guest today, Kea. We were just talking, she comes and works at co-working studio I work at, and she actually worked for Victoria's Secret. And then we just got to chatting. So I want to hear her perspective. And also I, I came from watching Victoria's Secret as like a basic white girl. And it's interesting <laughs> to see it, like you even mentioned, you were like, oh, it wasn't really for me. So I would love to hear your perspective of it. Growing up, I never watched it. Mm -hmm. I don't, it wasn't in my household. And probably yeah, because I didn't see representation in it when Victoria's Secret opened up in Vancouver. And I applied, got it. I feel like I drank the Kool-Aid a little yeah. bit. Like they definitely sold us on this idea that it was for everyone. It was so empowering. Yeah, I just felt like we were truly helping women they invest in things that you know supported them yeah. both like physically and emotionally yeah. <laughs> around like the the store from like head to toe ceiling you have these posters of like these gorgeous thin women yeah predominantly white in their bikinis or yeah. in their bras. And I would often go buy a bra because like I felt sexy because it was underneath and it was like, oh, I'm wearing something sexy. So even though, yes, it was for the male's gaze, it was also this empowerment, like I'm gonna feel sexy for me. And it was women empowerment. It's funny in hindsight, like now I'm like, that wasn't super diverse. Yeah. But when I was there, like I remember looking up at the posters and just being like mesmerized yeah. and like, wow, how cool is this? Mm -hmm. I think you had even mentioned like embracing your sexuality yeah. That was something that in any other space you weren't really encouraged to do. I also remember when I started working there, that's when I also started watching the fashion shows. Yeah. And they were also, at the time, trying to be more diverse. Yeah. Like there were black women. Yeah. I remember like there was a, I don't know, two black women. One had like really short hair. Okay. And I was just like, whoa, this yeah. is ultimate representation. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I think we forget at the time it was really empowering. Yeah. I think we've moved way past that. I think it was interesting that we forget Victoria's Secret was really revolutionary. And I think they lost the mark, like they forgot to, when everyone else started progressing and they were kind of doing just like the first step, they kind of stayed with their first step and was like, oh, we're good. Cause I think of Tyra Banks way back when the nineties and she had boobs and that was like, so like, whoa. And all the women were known for being, I know this is funny, curvy. Yes. Versus yeah. cause it was like the Kate Moss stick thin hair when she, and they were the first to be like curves and like, the one thing I remember, which is also comical, is it was the first time we saw muscles on a woman. Now, it was very small, but as like a woman who I always had, you know, muscle definition, and that was not seen as girly, seeing these women with abs and some definition in their legs, like, which is funny, I know now, but we forget, sometimes we like criticize, but we forget that was as progressive as yeah. it could be at the time. Because when I saw the black model with mm -hmm. her short hair, and it was short, natural hair, yeah. That was revolutionary for the black community oh, at the time. Because yeah. it was like, I actually at the same time that I was working at Victoria's yeah. Secret was the first time that I had the confidence to wear my hair natural, which oh. is actually like ironically yeah. catapulted this entire like content creating yeah. journey. But I actually forgot yeah. about that till right now. I just got chills. I, oh my God. <laughs> and I just, I, yeah, I felt yeah. like beautiful. I felt empowered. The representation, still so much that was harmful about yeah. it but there was like these little elements. I got like teary eyed for that. I was like, that's so amazing. And like two things can be truth. They did a great thing and they showed like, I think a lot of us saw, saw empowerment and it was the first step and it was the step society needed, but it's like, okay, but you had to keep going. Yeah. Kelty, what were you prepping for? Um, girls trip. Every year, me and my girlfriends spend the entire year saving up to go on a crazy girls trip that we get all of our raven out of the way. Uh, so I figured, you know what? Let's just spend 24 hours just being peak wellness health to counteract everything that's about to happen in three, two, one.
but I do think the problem stems down to women being forced to look a way that isn't natural and what their body actually wants to sit at. Now there is going to be a couple of people, these six, four Giselles who are naturally always going to be long and lean and there's nothing against that. It being prized as that is the perfect woman, people who don't naturally have that body type are gonna try and fit it instead of us celebrating every single body type and where it's naturally happy. I will forever say I think the worst thing for women is that like our body types can be trends. Like I won't lie, I've, I fall into like the long lean arm individual and that's just how I'm built. But I will never have a big booty. I will never have a Kim K. I remember I used to feel such pressure of how I dressed and how I do my weights and all this just to try and not have a pancake booty instead of bracing who I am. No body type is right or wrong, but so many women will feel the pressure to change just where their body's naturally happy. If there is this, this is what is perfection. And what they're doing in the new show, which I see, which I love, is they're celebrating every different type of body type. If you look at the commercial, every, it, it was so cool seeing every person in that show looks amazing hot, sexy, powerful. I think just seeing the Victoria's Secret Model Show come back, it just brought so many thoughts that were like contradicting. I loved it and I hated it. It was powerful, but it was discriminating and it was just like a lot and just talking to my friends and other people. I think a lot of us feel the same way. I think we've had time to like, as society's moved on and can reflect back, like, was it good? Was it bad? It impacted so many Gen Z and millennial women. It is insane. And I know I didn't hit every talking point. I, at first this video is just supposed to be fun. And then as I went on to it, I was like, oh, we have so much to talk about. So I'd love if you could all comment down below how you look back at the Victoria's Secret fashion show, how it affected you, where you'd like to see it go, because I think I need to make more of this video. I think this is just a starting point. I kind of am itchy now to make a documentary about it, kind of like I did with my explant video and some of my others. So if you guys would like that, I'll give this a thumbs up and leave your own thoughts of it, because I think I'm gonna compile that together and try and get a general census of how this impacted us. Was this a foundational moment in your own fitness journey? Or are you like, Kelty wasn't that deep, it was some girls in glittery bras, and I just liked it. <laughs> uh, comment down below and have a great day. Go pet dog. Love you guys, bye.